Hey YouTube, uh, just doing a quick video on uh, my Forester again. Um, I'm in a couple groups uh, online um, regarding Subarus in general, uh, lifted Subarus, lifted Subaru Foresters. So what I'm going to do um, is do a quick video on modifications I've done to my Subaru. Um, every time I, I share a picture on a group, everyone's always asking, um, how did you do that? What is that? How much did it cost? Um, so what I'm going to do is just do one video on everything I've done up till this point, And I can just share a link, uh, right in the comments and it'll, it'll help, uh, people out, I guess. Um, as well as different ideas that I, that I've done in my Forester that other people could pick up on. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn the camera around. I'm just on a trail right now. Um, I'm actually kind of close to a highway uh, right now. But there was a kind of a trail that was kind of parallel with the road. So I drove down it. I'm going to shoot a quick video on the Forester. I just washed it. Uh, it might not look super washed right now because I came down this trail. Uh, but what we're going to do, turn the camera around and we're going to, uh, I'll show you what's done to the Forester. Hey YouTube, so we're out of the vehicle now uh, and we're going to go over the modifications done to the Forester. So it is a 2017 Subaru Forester. It's a 2.5 liter uh, CVT transmission. I haven't had any issues with the transmission yet. Um... It's been in for a couple of recalls, um, just the passenger seat airbag, uh, the lifters on the tailgate. I had to go in for that as well. Yeah, so what we're going to do is just go over the, the mods done to the Forester. And I'll kind of show you around, talk about price and things like that. So starting up front here, uh, sorry it's windy, uh, so I'll just try to talk a little bit loud. I'm just doing this on my phone, so... Uh, under the hood, uh, the only thing that's done is I have a K&N air filter. And I do notice that the Subaru does pick up a little bit better um, on acceleration, things like that. Uh, it, it did get a little bit better gas mileage as well. I was doing some testing with that. Whether you like the oiled filters or you don't, that's kind of your preference. But I've run K&N on two other vehicles haven't had any issues with the MAF or the map sensor I guess so take it for what it is so up front here I do have <clears throat> some overlays on it I didn't really like the blue uh, I do have a blacked out grill that I did with Plasti Dip I did that kind of right after I got the Forester so it is kind of looking a little dirty right now uh, right down here we have the uh, OEM tow hook that I painted red uh, nothing special about that. So I'm just going to get a shot of the offset wheels here. I'm just going to go around. So the Forester is sitting on a 2 inch lift kit from Raceland. At the time I didn't have a whole lot of money and I wanted uh, this lifted. So I went with the 2 inch lift kit which was I think $299 American at the time. So it's a two inch lift kit in the front and a two and a half inch lift kit in the rear. So that's what I went with. Um, the two and a half for the rear is uh, for extra gear passengers and things like that. So that's why I went with that. So I'm going to move down to the tires here. Oh, so the tires and wheel setup, yeah, I'm running the Maxxis Bravo 771 ATs. They do work really well. Uh, I am. I really do like them. I ran them all winter in a Canadian winter. Didn't have any issues getting stuck, sliding around, things like that. I don't believe, no, actually they're not, um, I guess, snow peak rated or, or whatever the, the term is for the tires. But they're not rated and they did really, really well. I am impressed with them. I would totally get them again. Um, but I, I always like trying out different things and stuff like that. So maybe I'll change it up. So the wheels are a Pro Comp 16 inch, I think they're 16 by 8 or 16 by 7 and a half wide. Uh, a lot of these uh, wheels people run on Jeeps. Uh, I got them locally. They were in pretty bad shape. They still look in pretty bad shape as you can see. I think this one's the worst one. If you look at the back one. Nah, 
they're kind of like a mix of dirty and rusty <laughs> so what I'm gonna do this summer is I'm gonna uh, just redo them sand them down to bare metal and kind of kind of repaint them again I am gonna go there I think a semi gloss right now I am gonna go to a matte black I did have to purchase the center caps uh, separate they didn't the guy for whatever reason didn't have center caps with it so we're just gonna move around here this here is I'm always getting questions about that on my hood it's like a bug deflector I guess uh, more so for like rock chips and things like that I was on the vehicle when I got the vehicle so I can't really say how much they are um, Okay, stepping over to the side here. I'm just trying to think of what next. Okay, so what we're gonna talk about now is the light bar. I get asked how I'm out of my light bar all the time. So right there, I'll swing around to the other side as well so you can see. But these are the 2005 to 2011 or 2015 Toyota Tacoma light bar brackets. Um, so that's how I mounted them. They are riveted into, I guess the rails here not into the plastic um, so if you are going to do that modification make sure you don't use the plastic you want to use kind of the metal there that's why it sticks out if if I did go into the plastic here this would kind of sit flush and it would look a little bit better but it wouldn't be as strong uh, and these brackets are like solid I could shake the whole Subaru with those brackets uh, so how I have it wired I have it running down my passenger or my driver's side um, window pillar I guess so I just to kind of stick it in there and keep it in place I did use some black silicone to kind of glue it there um, okay so what we're gonna do is go to the top so the basket is a hitch receiver basket to put on your hitch for I guess coolers and things like that I modified it to fit on the roof love it picked it up locally cheap um, so I got a pretty good deal on it uh, the crossbars here are just cheap crossbars I got off Amazon, nothing super special. I believe they're 47 inches wide. I did paint them black. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to jump up top here and talk about the, the fuel can. So I do have this kind of Jimmy rigged up here until I can get a better setup right now. But these are the, the Scepter uh, fuel cans. Uh, these are 10 liter. I'm not really sure what that converts to uh, as far as gallons goes, but I do have three of them sitting up here. So this basket, I can fit three of them wide, which I like. So this will give me over just over uh, half a tank of gas. I could purchase a couple more and have, you know, like three here and then like another th row of three. I don't know, maybe in the future. Um, so these are military grade uh, I guess jerry cans um, Didn't want to go with roto packs or anything like that They look cool and things like that, but I don't know I just these are local and I like how it's made in Canada. So I so I picked them up right now I it's kind of looks kind of Jimmy rigged like I have a bicycle lock on here to hold them These are actually not super cheap. These are I think they were like $60 per Per jerry can and they do have a 20 liter one as well um, and they're even more expensive. So if you want to get two bigger cans instead of smaller ones, you can do that as well. But these, I guess, are made are used by um, the Canadian and U.S. Army. I don't know how true that is, but uh, that's what they tell me. So right here we have a pipe. Uh, this is a do-it-yourself awning, and uh, it's just a little bit longer than the basket. I didn't want to pay for one, so this is just ABS plastic. Um, this is screwed in. I got it really tight because it's not extending out the back. This is how I attach my tarp here. And then if you go to the front here, you can kind of unscrew it. I didn't want this pole to be super long. And my tarp I have goes out to... My tarp goes up to there. So I didn't want the whole pipe to be that long. That's why I kind of made this this one slide and the other. So the outer one is a two inch pipe and this is a one and a half inch pipe, just kind of slides in. This is how I connect the other side of the tarp. And then it just 
there's screws on this has a really good uh, o-ring on it so it's super waterproof okay going around back here i have a two inch hitch that uh the place i bought the subaru from installed for me i do have a blacked out subaru and the forester over there that's blacked out as well so this is my Instagram if you wanted to follow. The offset looks good, but it, it, man, uh, trying to keep this thing clean is ridiculous. So down here I have a, just like a, an exhaust tip that I put on the Forester. It kind of looked really weird without one. So I just got one, put it on there. Doesn't really do anything for noise. It's just more or less for looks. Okay, so going over here I have the cargo box is a Thule Summit. So I got this idea from Donald on Soft Roading the West. Super great channel. Check it out. I've probably watched his videos 10 times uh, each video. Um, he has a Forester that actually uh, he just got into an accident with. And I don't know what he's going to be driving now. Uh, but I did get the idea from Donald uh, for the box. So... The difference between, so I'm running both. I'm running a basket and I'm running a box, which I like. So a box, you can kind of keep things contained, keep the snow and mud off things. Um, in there, uh, up top, I do have, right now I do have a shovel that I'm going to mount on the side of the basket on the other side. Uh, so I'll post pictures on my Instagram of that, how I mounted it, what mounts I used and things like that. So... I wanted a slim, long box because uh, you can fit into parking garages better with it. It's better for gas mileage. Um, and you wouldn't think, but something that narrow and long, I can store a lot of things. Um, I went camping last summer, put uh, firewood, camp chairs, tent, you name it in there and, and it can hold it. So I do prefer something long and narrow, I guess skinny, um, as opposed to something that's super short and tall better for gas mileage better for getting into garages and things like that so that's that's kind of my take on the 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 roof setup i do kind of run a, a basket and a, a box so it's best best of both worlds uh, as far as the basket goes uh, other things you can put up here for the summer are you know like dirty equipment you don't want in in your vehicle you can put uh like i'm gonna run this summer up there i do have a five pound propane tank that i'm gonna run up there it's better to run it uh, outside of your vehicle than inside i guess is what i'm told so um, yeah there's possibilities are endless uh for that what i'm gonna do is you gotta be careful on these seams not not just on this basket but any cargo basket you should put some silicone to kind of prevent the water from getting in there and rusting it out from the inside. It is coated on the the outside, but it's not on the inside. So uh, one thing to, to think about. I'm just going to give you a kind of a walk around. Love the car, no issues. Uh, like, I, uh, like I said, um, people ask me, well, why are you, you know modding a, a subaru and and things like that so i i've had a lifted jeep before i've had a lifted tj six inch lift with 35 inch tires it was fun for sure but that's not super practical um so this is kind of more a daily driver that's capable so the all-wheel drive system in the subaru works really really well um actually almost better probably than my jeep tj did uh, but the downfall of a Subaru is there's no low low range. So there is a X mode. Um, that's not really a true low range for crawling. Uh, and I'm not I'm not out trying to crawl rocks and you know get super crazy with the off roading. But if there's a trail, I, I want to check it out. If it's not super super crazy, I'd like to check it out. I like you know finding new spots uh to explore and things like that so this is just uh more or less a daily driver that's uh that's capable so if you guys have any questions or anything post in the comments below maybe i'll do a couple more videos 
uh, on me actually getting out driving the Subaru around it's really hard when you don't have somebody to film you're doing all the filming yourself so um, yeah like I said got I did steal the the idea for uh, the the box up top from Donald um, check him out on YouTube soft roading the West he's got wicked wicked overlanding videos um, I love watching them I actually wish he would put up more videos because I love watching them that much but uh, yeah so I just want to give you a quick rundown if anybody has any questions put them in the comments below and uh, subscribe uh, maybe I'll make a couple more videos if not I'm more active on my Instagram so if you want to rewind and check out uh, my Instagram uh, that'd be super appreciated so anyway guys thanks for thanks for watching and uh, yeah stay safe <laughs>